final highlight I'd like to show you is our quest system. So Mordor has its nemesis system. Well, we got the blight system. So the first thing is, I said, like, you know, there's a passage of time within the game world. And so we can see here what's going on with this particular town, how much unrest it was, how wealthy it is. And these things change over the course of, of time. And we can see the population has been shrinking over the last year and see what their main industries are. Now, I can go and talk to the town lord and I get placeholder graphics right now. And when I go and I talk to him, he might have some quests for, for me to do. Right now, he says, no, actually, I don't have anything going on. In, and so, again, because it's procedural, procedurally generated world, I as the designer, I don't know what quest this guy is going to have for you. And so there's a whole system behind the scenes that we call the blight system that's determining this. And so I'm going to show you kind of how that works. So this is the game world. Again, it's super small right now just for this uh, little demo. Um, so this is the game world. And when it generated this game world, it had populated it with um, what we call problems. And a problem could be uh, the lair of a particular creature like Cyclops or uh, the, a nest of, of giant spiders or something like that. I can, normally the player can't see what that is, but I have this special hotkey to show you. There's one of the problems that have been generated in the world. Let's see if there's any other ones. Oh, just one problem in the world right now. And so what that means is that this problem emanates from this particular location. Okay, so over time, the problem will grow and there's various stages to the different kinds of problems that can be in the game world. And as they grow, the radius at which they affect increases. So imagine, for instance, giant spiders. So there's a giant spider queen that is living in this particular area and she starts laying eggs. Now over a month, over a couple years, um, those eggs are going to hatch into more spiders and more spiders and the radius starts to increase of where the giant spiders are. And so if the player is to walk through the area surrounding um, this particular problem, they will encounter giant spiders and, and maybe need to fight them. But as that problem increases, the spiders become, because there's more and more of them, they start to create problems along this particular road line. So the AI traders that are going along there, they start reporting that those problems are going on. And then it gets maybe even worse, is that if there's like tons and thousands of these spiders, because the, the problem has gone on so long without being addressed, um, people start going missing in the town. Maybe the town even gets attacked by giant spiders, and now the guards are dying, and citizens are dying, and people are fleeing, and it affects the population levels of the town. So all that stuff's going on behind the scenes. And the other aspect of it is as the radius increases, as the spiders, they start venturing out further, it can affect not just this close town, but this town as well, and maybe even this town. So what that means is as the player is going through the game world and they go, say, down to this town and they start talking at the inn and what's the local gossip, they start talking about, oh, there's these giant spiders that are, are really causing some trouble. Oh, that's interesting. Then they go up to this town and they're like, yeah, giant spiders are a huge problem. And so the player can, um, through a series of of clues start to discover where exactly are these giant spiders coming from and that creates what we call an adventure and goes into a dungeon. I can show you how that uh, simulates along. So um, this is our calendar up here. So w when I ask this guy, hey, are there any problems? He's like, no. And the reason is because that problem is still new and it's not affecting his domain yet. But I can uh, pass time here. I'm going to pass a whole bunch of time. Now I'm going to talk to him. Now he says everything's fine in his domain. And that's okay. That may not necessarily be true, but that's what he knows. And so there's a whole information system about how information flows from NPC to NPC and gets it's simulated along the roadways um, between the different towns and stuff. And so nobody has come and, and told him, at least, about any problems. But the noble's not the first person to find out, just like the CEO is not the first person to find out about problems in a company. So let's go to the inn and find out if there's any local news. Okay, so 21 days ago, so-and-so had a baby. Again, that's the time simulation going on, so there's you know now one more person in here. But uh, four days ago, there were some large webs seen in the forest. So this gives me an indication that something is going on in this area. Um, this creates um, an X on the map, and now I can go and investigate that X. And based on my skills, I might be able to determine where the tracks are leading back to the spider nest or not. And so if I can't, then I simply have to wait around to see what other clues come up, and then I can go and investigate those clues. But eventually, I can find out where the spider nest is going to be. Hopefully, you can see that by having many types of problems and many types of creatures and how they interact with the world and the environment around them, it creates for a lot of replayability and just a lot of interesting stuff to happen. If a goblin lair and a spider lair overlap, um, they could be fighting against each other and not necessarily the town. There's 
there's just a, like a lot of system interaction here within the quests.